Hey everybody, it's Jillian. So, yeah, it's getting into the mood right now. And last night I finished watching a movie called Rajneesh Puram. And I didn't realize that actually I see this person's quotes and I see his disciples and followers all over my Facebook and they're always quoting something about, I don't know, some kind of daily affirmation. I think it's Osho or something. Um, and yeah, the stuff sounds good. I mean, I'm not knocking some of the messages out there. I mean, Jesus had some great stuff. Oh God, Gandhi, who else? Um, Mandela, Nelson Mandela, uh, Dalai Lama, like there's all these different figures out there that are demagogues. <laughs> I'm going to call them demagogues, okay? That have some great stuff or else if they didn't have great stuff, they wouldn't have followers. It's not just hypnotizing people through their biochemistry, though that is part of it. I mean, you have to have some kind of words put together to reach a person along with knowing what the predominant hormone is at the surface. And so I was watching last night about Rajneesh Puram and, and his compound and commune back in the 80s. And it was such a political thing going on back then because they did take over a town. They actually kept a town under hostage. And there were so many people, like so many followers. And then people kind of, then some of the leaders in, within that commune cult, because uh, Rajneesh Puram had followers, he didn't necessarily speak to, to the people that much. He had conduits. He had people speak for him who then kind of took it upon themselves, took the reins, and then started just going the circuit. It was as if I didn't really want to speak to the world and I'm doing Jilly Juice, and so I dubbed John and Bridget as my speakers and they went out there and preached the word of Jillian <laughs> and 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 then it's like oh god wow and no one and then and then just how you could see the biochemistry you could see the anger you could see you know the the different I, I guess to say demons you know that come out when challenged and so I'm just like watching this going like oh my god and then there was like assassination plots and all this other stuff and the government's going like, what the hell is going on? They're trying to do a vote in that town to vote somebody in and vote somebody out. And then then it came to like bioterrorism, you know, uh, messing with the water supply so they can get less votes in and more votes of their people. I mean, it's just like, oh my gosh. So I, I could see now why the government is cracking down and watching the internet. I can understand now from the 1960s and 1970s because of the demagoguery, demigods, the MK Ultra, which is very stressful um, type of therapies that bring up specific hormones in people and then using those hormones, the energy, the spirit of the person, and then guiding them towards a specific talent, drawing out their gifts. And that's and that really was the, that's why we had such great music out of the 1960s and 1970s and great actors and pretty crazy movies. I mean, and a lot of cults, a lot of serial killers. I mean, when you're messing with people's biochemistry, they will be very, very talented and potentially can maintain their talent for many, many years. Or they will glitch so hard that eventually... They will be one of those that the police are have to go and figure out uh, who's killing these people in our society, and so, and so yeah. So I I get now why it is. I get now why it is that why the government is cracking down on the you know on people what they say on the internet, the different cults out there, and then uh, a lot of the hippie people out there a lot of i don't know are yes offshoots from the 1960s and 1970s lsd I, ayahuasca type of stuff and so you know and, and that's really you know because 
when you look at politics, religion, and science, I mean, let's just bring it all together, okay? Politics, religion, and science all are about how um, putting up little demigods or demigods and them speaking and preaching whatever word within the politics, whatever science, or whatever in the religion. And it's interesting why some cultures, like I, it's interesting how um, some cultures really gravitate towards the spiritual playing with the hormones, obviously in biotech as well. I mean, biotech has two different sides. They have a very life-giving side and innovation, and they also have a very exploitative side of which then turns people into things and martyrs and whatever. And that is the destructive part of biotech. And so, and so, once we know that mortal humans are being exploited, like mortal humans are being exploited for their gifts, and then in turn they become great speakers and they promote a political thought process, a religious thought process, or a scientific process, then you realize that really they're all ministers of the latest thing of the day, the latest mark, the latest thing on the market. And then we produce them, yes, in in the lower levels when it comes to products products and services. I mean, I was, I was also groomed in a lot of ways to be in sales and I was in sales for many, many years. And yeah, it does, you know, adrenaline and, um, competition. I mean, that's the thing with competition. Competition does breed some kind of stress, you know, when your district manager is pitting you against your other, your other peer groups and telling you, you're going to be better than they are. You know, they're not good or, or, you're not as good as this, that guy, so you got to do this, 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 and this to be good. I mean, that's how the system then really just brings out the best in people, but then at what expense? And that's the thing. You can still be the best without sacrificing yourself. But then, you know, when you are a mortal human, okay, and immortality is just maintaining your existence. It's not magic. It's, I mean, you, you can say that chemistry can be kind of magic, but really... When you take salt, cabbage, and water, and you ferment it, and kale, and you eat the food supply, you release the excess, you know, you deal with your pain, it, there's no magic to that. It's just the only magic that I guess you could construe with something like that is the involuntary mechanisms that know how to keep your hands with five fingers. It's not like you're going to grow another finger. And so the magic around any type of maintenance of immortality is the fact that the body knows what to do without you actually having to go and manually open up channels in your biochemistry. It balances everything out based upon the intelligence. And intelligence can be magic, yes. I could see that. But that's the thing. And so and so really, you know, so mortal humans are being exploited. And so immortality means that you've balanced out your hormones. You're not allowing somebody go in and exploit all of your prejudices. That's what demagoguery is. I mean, when you look at like Candace Owens, you look at Trump, you look at Biden, you look at all the different speakers that people are like, oh, this person is so wonderful. This person is this, this person is that. They're speaking to my listening. And of course, they're always taking a side against one thought process or another. Um, you could say that with me, but I'm here. I'm saying, hey, immortality, you all want to live, right? There's no taking sides. You say you want to live and you're doing everything to live, oncology and all your little supplements, and then you're dying. I'm not taking a side. I'm just kind of giving you what you already want. But everyone else out there, that's why I've cornered the market. I'm not trying to be narcissistic. I'm not trying to be like whatever. But I've cornered the market because life is life. The laws of life. Not the, the assumptions and the perceptions of life. But there's laws of life and there's laws of death. And so, and so when you look at those in the politics, religion, and science, it's all about taking a side and promoting the perception of one thing when it's really the other and then trying to ob obviously get your donations and get all of, you know, selling books and selling, you know, TV spots and and sound bites. And, and it becomes a business when you appeal to someone's prejudices. It really does. It becomes a business. And that, you know, and I recognize a lot of those types, you know, and I didn't understand why I felt like an aversion to them. But then, you know, I was kind of like that myself when I first was taking some of those courses in Landmark Education back in the 90s. And I remember when I first did Landmark courses and I was telling my mom about it, trying to get her to go into it. And I sounded like some Mooney. I sounded like some cult member. You got to do it. It's the next best thing to slice bread. Oh, my God. It's amazing. You change your life. 
you'll change everything, everyone should do this. I mean, you could tell when someone has been like manipulated and hypnotized that they then start pounding the gavel. And that's why I say to people, do not try to convert people on JJs. You give them the information, you don't tell them they're gonna have this, you know, reaction, that reaction, that reaction. You you know, I mean I or 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 promise that they're gonna have like peace and, and they're gonna be cured. I mean, because Jilly is not a cure. Jilly juice is like you got to deal with your predispositions. You got to deal with pain. You got to deal with your your anxiety. You got to deal with the fact that you have imbalances in your in your microbiome, your candida. Yeah, you might be drinking beer, but that's okay. You can drink beer. Just do the J juice, and eventually you won't drink as much beer. Maybe you still drink some beer, but you won't drink as much beer. Okay. And so we're not moonies. We're not cult members. We're not trying to get a bunch of people. I'm not trying to get people in the group. I'm not trying to add even a bunch a bunch of friends. You know, I really want very specific people that I know are intelligent enough to discern between a cult and discern between a promise of a cure and then, you know, actually facing your predispositions, being accountable for what you say you want, which is you want to live. Well, here is the the laws of life. You got to feel pain. If you apply antibiotics and you keep taking all your little supplements that are hormone replacement therapy. And you're not offsetting and bringing in nutrition and, you know, allowing the body to release any excess, you know, then, then, you, no, I don't, I don't think you belong if you don't, if you can't discern between dealing with the laws of life and uh, biomanipulation. And that's what nutrition, that, that's what the supplements are, is they're basically um, hormone replacement. They're pro-hormones. You don't realize that, right? So when you know, so when you're doing all the energy stuff and you're playing with the crystals and the chakras and you're doing the pressing here and the reiki there and the massage here, you're messing with somebody's energy. You're messing with their chakras. You're messing with their biochemistry. And why are you doing that? Because that person is in pain. You're not giving them any nutrition. You're not telling them to face their their demons and face their evolution and support it with nutrition and support it with water and you need the balance of sugar and salt and carbs. No, you're met, you're pressing on people. You're actually touching people. And even if you don't touch people, you tell them how to touch themselves. How is that different than the Rajneesh Purim doing all the orgiastic stuff they did in the communes? Because that's when the police officers were brought in because a couple of his members were, um, were taking money from him. They were embezzling funds from him. This is in the cult back in 1985, the Rajneesh Puram cult. And they find that, so then finally the law enforcement were invited to come in and take a look at everything. And they're like, oh my God, everyone's having sex everywhere. Everyone's doing this. And and it was like everything that, that you would not do in regular society was done in this cult. So that's why it's a little bit concerning when someone says they want to go off grid or they want to be you know, in a commune and go away from society. Because like, what are you going to do? You're not... You're not going to tap into your immortality because you have to have access to diverse nutrition. And then you're going to then be subject to your proclivities, to your Im unbalanced um, biochemistry. And so, and so anyways, um, so if you want to understand where demagoguery and demigods come from, you know, and where they're so prolific and why you must understand why politics, religion, and science you know, it's like, holy crap, they are the ministers of something. Well, look at politics, religion, and science. That's where the demigods and the demagogues are born from. And so when you go into politics, when you are in a religion, whatever is organized or not, when you're in spirituality and you're playing with people's chakras and you're selling crystals and selling love, 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 and selling an emotion, that's demagoguery. I mean, you see it in all the different conspiracy, you know, anti-government people. You see them holding court. One runs a big, huge gym. They're all into like the workout and saying, oh, yeah, you know, self-sabotage and whatever. And, and they're appealing to the prejudice of their clients. And then, yeah, they have a gym like, yeah, you know, work out. Be, be like me. Be a Hercules. Be like me. Be a beautiful, really skinny you know, big boobed with, you know, a flat, with a flat belly six pack and, and have legs that go on forever and wear your, you know, your bustiers and your booty shorts. And this is how you sell. And then you have other ones that sell relationships. 
Hey, I can get you to get a girl. I can, I can tell you how to get a girl just like that. And there's a way to manipulate women out there to get them in bed. And, and you don't have to have any kind of commitment to them. They just get them in bed and they'll be okay with it. How do you get a girl in bed and doesn't want a relationship and she, and she wants it, you know, and, and, and that's a lot of the demigods and the demigogs out there. It's a trip. It's such a trip. And so this is what, you know, what I want you guys that are watching me to look at who in your world wants to be a demigod, wants to be a demagogue, selling a perception, selling a lifestyle, selling, you know, you know, from their most predominant hormone. And yeah, when you actually break down people's personality types, it's really the hormone that runs them. And so then, yeah, logic and reasoning are not going to be part of the forefront. It's going to be all emotional biochemical impulses, hypno addiction. And that doesn't, that word doesn't exist, but I made it up because when you're always being hypnotized by somebody's words and then plucking your biochemistry, it becomes an addiction. Just like people who are addicted to someone who's really great in bed, it becomes an addiction. You're looking for that release. You're looking for that, that, that feeling. You're looking for something that you can't give yourself. And so you rely on that other person to give it to you on a continuous basis. Okay. Hypno addiction is like prevalent in the politics, religion, and science because people's, people are looping in their biochemistry. And that's what's mostly at the surface until it runs out. And when it runs out, they start glitching and then they have to go and get drugs from, you know, from the pharmaceuticals to go and balance them out because they maybe have too much anxiety. Maybe they're so depressed. Maybe they have a sugar issue. Maybe they have an insulin issue. And so when, you know, when you have the valves of your biochemistry just left on because you can't seem to uh, tap into the intelligence of your body to be able to balance that out, then you're going to the pharmaceuticals and the holistic people are going to some uh, Reiki artist or some massage therapist to then manually release the energy in parts of your body, your lymph nodes and whatever. And so th this is the, I mean, I've been exposed to so many different people. I mean, luckily I had a great foundation in psychology. Um, and then of course the parents, you know, they were the silent generation, but they definitely were part of the 1960s, 1970s. And, and then with law as a background, psychology and bio, biotech, and then, being exposed to the holistic industry and the conspiracy community and then every single group that has an offshoot you know i've been in it i've experienced it i've i'll tell you what and and so then you start seeing patterns and the internet is so amazing if you actually pay attention to all the groups and all the people in your world you will see exactly where i'm coming from and then so then you're like well then what is life without all the different diverse biochemistries well, let me tell you, that's the new terrain. That's the pioneer in humanity is that maybe sometimes you got to break away from the group and forge a different way. And who knows what that different way is until you actually are in that specific persona and you have other people that are in that. And then somehow a new energy, a new chemistry is being, you know, coalescing together and who knows what the product and the outcome is, but at least it's going to be balanced. At least the outcome is not going to be glitching. It's not going to require you to go to biotech to get plucked and tip tucked and whatever plucked and tucked, <laughs> you know, at least with the, with the J juice and with what we're doing, the outcome is not going to be unbalanced energy. So I don't, so I, I don't see any fear of just forging your own path and actually understanding what immortality is because the mortal world, just look around you, politics, religion, and science, the study of the demagoguery. That's the best word in the freaking world. That actually explains everything that runs the gamut demagoguery. So, and so then, you know, then, then when you, and then when you're not playing in the demagoguery and you're not playing as a demigod, you're not working from some predominant hormone that keeps you addicted to something, then you're like, okay, what else, what else could we do with the world? What kind of thing could I invent? What kind of thing could I create? Or what kind of thing could I put together? 
What kind of life do I want to lead when I'm not run by a freaking hormone or run by the drugs in, in my, you know, in my prescription drug cabinet, when I'm not full of anxiety, when I'm not, you know, always having to go to the bars or always, you know, living in this hypnotic world of just complete, like, I don't know, uh, removal of all reality when you're living in a fantasy world. And, 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 and you can kind of tell nowadays with, some, with you know, a lot of friends and family where it's just like they are under hypnosis. You love them because they are your friends. You know they have strengths. You know they have weaknesses. You know they have struggles. You know they have a lot. They're suffering. And they're trying to get through. And I want to make them getting through get better. I want them not to feel like they have to get through or they have to survive. What What's wrong with thriving? What's wrong with not only managing what you have to take care of despite how difficult it can be, but it can be not as bad as you think. And then you can still create something out of that and still maintain a really awesome balanced existence and then have just, you know, a feeling of just well-being, you know, and, and that shouldn't be that difficult. But I'm telling you, when I was going through the Jelly Juice Protocol in the beginning and I was figuring out what kind of foods to eat and I went to this bar where it had, you know, really early on that had like really deep fried foods, I think it was peanut oil and stuff. And I ate the food and I started just mucusing, mucusing, mucusing. I mean, it was just like, oh my God. I thought that, oh my God, I cannot eat out anymore. I'm like, I have to stay away from fried food. I got to stay away from it. And I didn't realize that it was just my body um, releasing the excess because I was still dealing with unbalanced hormones. But then down the road, I ate at the same place. Still had the same food. No mucus, I didn't feel sick, nothing. And so, but your reality is, is when you're in it and you don't see another way to be because you're in it and you haven't like figured out, first of all, what you're, you know, you haven't figured out the science, you haven't intellectualized the change agent, the reagent that's coming into your world like jelly juice, then you're going to think that your current reality is the way it is. It will always be that and there's nothing else. And that's what I felt along the J-Juice protocol process until I kept doing J-Juice, I kept eating food, and then I noticed things changing over time. And that's really what the Jilly Juice is about, is that your reality, what you have, what you think is real right now, could actually change. But if you're not ready to change your current reality and you want to suffer and be in anxiety and deal with you know, cancer, disease, and chronic illness, and potential mortality, early mortality, then you'll continue in status quo. You'll get rewarded for staying in your status quo because there's plenty of rewards out there to keep people in a very specific tight box. And there's also punishment in that too. And sometimes the punishment outweighs the rewards, but people will still be punished. But what if it didn't have to be that way? What happens if the rewards are, are much more than the punishment? You know, what's punishment in my world when I have to deal with a new variant and that variant makes me tired. So then I got to take myself out of the game and take a nap. That's it. That's my punishment. But other people's punishment for having the unbalanced energy is they are in anxiety. They got to go get their drugs. They got to go in and release energy. They have to, you know, they're, they know that they have things looming in their world, predispositions that they can't seem to control. I mean, there's a lot of punishment in the world of mortality. And that's why mortality is very entertaining. Because watching somebody glitch and watching somebody be a supernova, which is not fun, but it's energy. And people feed off that energy. It's food. How many times have you watched the news or watched some of your friends suffering and you're like feeling like, ooh, I don't like seeing my friends suffer, but then it makes you happy that you're not suffering and you wish that they didn't have to suffer, but you're more than happy to take that energy. And that's the thing is when people are suffering, yes, their friends and family come around them, but they're feeding off that energy. It's the energy that they're taking because they're not really giving back. They have nothing to offer to their friends and family, really, except for, okay, I'll be your support. But is the person going to give you anything that's going to change their situation? No. 
it's just another way to 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 cope. And so I don't know. I'm just I'm just rambling right now because I know how much suffering there is in humanity. And immortality is not some pie in the sky, unicorn, fluffy, marshmallow freaking thing. No, immortality is being responsible and maintaining your existence with specific chemistry. And chemistry, alchemy, all of that is so integral in all these different demigods and demagogues. And so I just want you to realize that for what it is. And so when you are in your politics, you are in your religion and in your science and you're watching Dr. Fauci and you're watching Biden or Trump or you're watching, you know, some pastor or some guru, some spiritual guru that is talking about love, love, love. Remember, they're working from a very, very strong hormone that is that is appealing to your biochemistry and to your prejudices. And they know just where to pluck because they have too much experience and they're very adept with the the written word and the verbal word. And then they get their liquid courage from their biochemistry, their energy. And so that's how they're able to sell the lifestyle. And yeah, it works for a certain amount of time. Until it doesn't. And then people become angry when people don't respond to their demagoguery. Because at some point, that's all going to, you know, you're going to use up all your energy. You're going to use up all of your different hormones. That's what drugs do is they bring up hormones. And you, you ride on those hormones. You ride on them. And that's why drug addicts can stay alive for a certain amount of time unless they're, unless the, the heart or the vital organs can't handle that much energy release. But yeah, drug addicts can live a long ass time because they're living off those hormones. But until those hormones are depleted, you know, they'll they'll ride on that and then one day the hormones will start being depleted and they start glitching and then they got to go and get other drugs from the pharmaceuticals to balance out their other biochemistry. And so what if it didn't have to be that way? But then, you know, are you going then you're like, "Well, how is it going to be exciting?" Well, you know, <laughs> does everything have to be exciting? Can't you just be calm and type something out and I don't know learn a new trade or learn a new subject matter or learn how to do something. What's wrong with learning how to do stuff? What's wrong with actually focusing your mind on a specific project and you complete it? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with taking your kid and showing them how to do their multiplication tables? What's wrong with that? What's wrong with, with, with you focusing your energy on making some of your, your targets better? You know, I, I, focus is one of the biggest things. And that's why a lot of college students take like the, the um, what is it, Ritalin so they can focus. Ritalin is supposed to focus kids who are ADHD, right? I guess some college students also use Ritalin to focus. And so what happens if you could actually focus without having to take drugs? That's the whole point of J-Juice is that you can focus on something without taking drugs. And then you can write about it. And the reason why you write about it because it slows your brain down to where you can start thinking about what the hell it is you believe in. Or are you making it some, you know, I realized when I was in the bathroom today, it's funny, that writing has really helped me make connections on things that I would not make those connections because when you're, when you're just speaking and you're emoting and you're reacting to this person, place, or thing, you're, you're not really thinking. You're just reacting. It's just the nearest, easiest thing to react to. And so then your reality and then assumptions are made from the reactions. But when you actually write out stuff and then you keep doing the JJ's and you keep evolving, you keep bringing in new information, you keep studying, you keep researching and all of a sudden you know you'll have a thought process that would be completely the opposite than what your assumptions were before you started writing and so writing really forces you to go and find words and force you to find the connections between ideas and between sentences and then yes focus will then start happening because writing will force you to be focused
But right now, all over Facebook, everyone has a quick daily affirmation, a quick meme, a quick, oh, if you don't like me, well, I'm not going to like you. Um, it's, you know, if, 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 I mean, there's always some snarky comment on Facebook from people who don't really write and who are living from their biochemical hormones. Maybe they're drug addicts, maybe they're weed pot smokers, and they're living from that point of view, and that's their reality, and they don't want anyone telling them that, that their pot smoking is bad because, you know, it's what's getting them by. How can you tell me that what's getting me by is bad? I'm, that's how they feel they survive. And so, and so, yeah, but then, you know, you look at the, in the 1960s and 1970s, all the talent, but all that talent came also from the stress. So if you're a pot smoker or doing drugs and you're not under any kind of stress, really, then you're just going to waste away. You realize that Jerry Garcia and all the different um, stars out there, they were probably under some kind of MK Ultra stress on some level. Okay. And so... Um, there's specific methods to how stars become stars. And then you have people who try to be these stars like, oh yeah, they were in the drugs and the alcohol and they were writing songs and doing this and doing that. How come I'm not a star like they are? Because they were molded to be that way. You're not being molded. You're just trying to do the drugs and trying to do whatever and trying to be a star and trying to be, you know, whatever, you know, and, and it's not going to happen. You're just going to waste away and release all your energy and for what? Because you want to be like that dude that's dead. When we revere people who are dead, that's where you're going to end up. When you revere someone like Rick Simpson and the Phoenix Tears and the CBD and the pot smoking, and you revere someone like, you know, Ron Jeremy or other different, you know, porn stars that have died, you want to end up like them. When you revere someone like Jesus, he's dead. He was a martyr, tortured by people in his town. You want to end up like him and then call people satanic when you're worshiping someone that is dead? I mean, I'm sorry, but I have to call a spade a spade. And that's the scary part of the Jilly Jews is that you will see the logic and you realize people are living in such illusions. And then you know how dangerous it can be to break people's illusions. Not that it's dangerous, dangerous, but people will, will hate you for it. They will. I mean, I've been hated for it. I've been defriended. I've been angry faced. I've been. Who knows? I mean, it's, but it is what it is. You got, I mean, Jilly Juice is going to force you to actually be aligned in what you say, what you do with everything that is out there. And then you see all the misalignment, the hypocrisy. You're like, what the hell? And you're like, how did I, how do people, how do people end up this way? Oh, I forget. That's right. Their biochemistry and their biochemistry is passed down from generation to generation. Until then, at some point, one generation will not be able to procreate because of a lot of stuff going on. And so I just offer you, you know, some kind of balance. I offer you some kind of peace. I offer you potential balance, not feeling you have to chase something that is not going to give you a return. And so be careful of the demagogues and demigods, the gurus, the people that play with your chakras, the filmy, oxytocin, honey, sweet, sickness people. Okay, because there is a specific hormone that runs them. There's names for them, yes. Then there's the adrenaline kind, the ones that are always fiery, tempery, go, go, go. Kick everybody's ass. Yeah, that's that's those are the Greek gods. Those are the Greek gods in the Greek mythology, and it translates into the population. So, and then people start selling the lifestyle. All right, bye. I've been rambling, but I needed to. Bye.